What's up everybody, Noble Comics here with round four of the Noble Comics Tournament of Power. This is going to be Doctor Doom versus Thrag from Invincible. But first, let's look at the results of the last match, Vegeta versus Doomsday. As we can see here, Vegeta won pretty handily and will advance forward in the bracket, having now defeated both Hulk and Doomsday. Getting into today's fight, let's start analyzing our opponents. We'll start with... Thrag, and I want to note first off that I have not read all of Invincible. I'm not super familiar with it. So if there's Invincible fans out there and there's something I miss or get wrong, please let me know. I'm sure you will. But let's get started, and first let's look at Thrag's power output. Now I'd say he's arguably the most powerful Viltrumite that we see in the series, based on what I've read. And um, this is quite clear any time the guy's in combat. We've seen him take on multiple very powerful other Viltrumites at once, like he fights Omni-Man and Invincible at the same time, whips both their asses. He's been seen like punching holes through Omni-Man, literally ripping apart people like Invincible, ripping apart multiple, you know, aliens and different combatants at once. He famously, you know, fought Battle Beast forever and defeated Battle Beast, wears his, cape, or wears his skin as a cape, even after being, you know, like, disemboweled uh, in a weakened state, he still manages to fight forever and beat him. Um, and Viltrumites, in general, are not as powerful as, like, Thor or Superman or one of those people, but their power output is said to be able to, be, you know, be a planetary-destroying force, and we do see a group of Viltrumites destroy a planet, but... We haven't seen a single Viltrumite destroy a planet, but if anybody could, it'd probably be Thrag, and I don't think that that's an unreasonable estimate of his power level. Looking at speed, um, he's faster than light travel speed for sure, and in the series they do make pretty clear that his reaction speed is extremely fast as well. And this is seen again because he's fighting, you know, multiple super speed people at once, and, and most of the feats I'm going to be pulling from are against people like Omni-Man um, because that's really like the highest scale that, that at least that I'm familiar with and Battle Beast of course who and again he wipes the floor with both both of these people absolutely crushes them um, really crushes anybody that he goes up against like throughout the entire series no matter how many people are against him at once he takes out multiple Viltrumites at once and manages to speed blitz multiple at once Easily is like ripping off heads and arms and stuff like that. The dude's an animal. Durability wise, again, super high durability. We've seen him be, you know, impaled or, or and disemboweled and stuff, and he's still able to, you know, fight and keep fighting and he eventually heals from it. He takes some, you know, powerful blows from Invincible and only gets a nosebleed. We see it was a Dinosaurus, um, who is capable of uh, shredding other Viltrumites try and bite him and all of his teeth shatter. This guy's extremely durable, and even whenever he does get wounded, he does have a healing factor, which is um, pretty strong. So, so far he's looking really good. When it comes to any type of energy output, energy projection, uh, not really any of that. No laser beams or anything of that nature. And when it comes to like combat intelligence, the guy's obviously... Um, very smart when it comes to combat. He's no, like, pushover. He's no, like, mindless monster. Um, though he is a monster, he does seem to be pretty smart and calculated. And his actual skill in combat is obviously extremely high. Again, taking on multiple powerful, skilled opponents at once. Taking on people like Omni-Man and making, like, quick and easy work of him. Obviously, very skilled combatant. So, we've got probably planetary-level power output. Super fast, faster than light. Super strong, as in, you know, durability. Um, we're looking at somebody here who's going to be a pretty major threat for someone like Dr. Doom. That said, let's look at Doom. So, starting at the top again, power output. We've seen Doom kind of fluctuate a ton over the years because he's one of these characters who's got, like, kind of like Batman, where he's got, like, a gadget for everything. So I'm going to try and keep it to his core abilities and not look at like everything he's ever had throughout the comics but power output we've seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe, of course with people like the thing being able to 
to uh, take blows and exchange blows with the Thing. Notably, we've seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hulk a few times, um, whether that's him kind of overpowering the Hulk, at least temporarily, being able to trade blows with him at least, um, or being able to take someone like the Hulk and revert him back to his Bruce Banner form. We've seen him also fight and be at least on par in strength with people like Namor, which is obviously pretty impressive. So power output, is, as far as like raw strength, with his suit and everything like that, he's pretty powerful. I don't know if he could like destroy a planet or something like that, but he can definitely hold his own against people that can. When it comes to speed, he is not a speedster, though he has shown reaction speed being able to fight people like Black Panther, fight people like The Thing, fight people like Spider-Man. So he's like peak human, I guess you would say. And that's like peak human in a comic book world, which is obviously way above peak human in the regular world. When it comes to durability, like I said, being able to take hits from people like the Hulk, people like Namor, uh, people like the Thing. He also has a force field that he's got that's able to take, you know, full power blasts from Iron Man and from, again, people like the Thing, who, you know, I'm probably going to mention a lot, major Fantastic Four villain, Doctor Doom. So it should be self-explanatory. But... So his durability is probably higher than his output, I would say. Um, then when it comes to any sort of energy output or versatility, that's where Doctor Doom really has the advantage and starts to shine. Because not only does he have energy output like lasers, kind of like Iron Man, or electric shocks, but he also has magic. If you didn't know, Doctor Doom is a pretty potent sorcerer. Um, he trained under Doctor Strange for a while. I think... At some point, he even became the Sorcerer Supreme in some storylines. Probably not super consistent. But he is consistently very powerful with magic. We've seen him take on people like Wiccan and Morgan Le Fay and overpower them. And we've seen him use these abilities to fight people much more powerful than him, like Celestials. He usually loses those fights, but hey, he at least fought them in the first place. Um, when it comes to intelligence, obviously Doctor Doom is one of the most intelligent people in Marvel Comics. He's probably number two behind Reed Richards. And fighting skill, he is a very skilled fighter. Like I said, he's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe and overpowered people like Black Panther and Spider-Man. And at one point, he like takes over Daredevil's body. And in his body is able to be like a pretty, um, pretty uh, good martial artist like he obviously has some skill that he's able to use so Dr. Doom has some of the power at least he's at least able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with people as strong as Thrag he's got much more versatile energy output and magic he's got the durability to take some hits speed wise he gets toasted and just overall power he definitely gets toasted so it makes it kind of a tough fight because Physical stats, obviously Thrag has the major advantages, right? But Doom has the intelligence advantage, and he has versatility advantage. Now, the comic book, like Marvel comic fan and me who knows Doctor Doom way more than I know Thrag, would like to think that Doctor Doom would be able to outsmart Thrag and think of a way to use his magic and everything to his advantage because he doesn't have the physical advantage. Now... Who knows, as far as Thrag's concerned, who knows how uh, vulnerable or invulnerable he is to magic. That could be a major deciding factor here. Maybe Doom can just transport the guy away, which is kind of BS, or overpower him with like chains of Sidorak or something like that, which he has used in the comics before. But I don't want to downplay his power output, because again, we have seen him manhandle people like the Hulk before in his, you know, lower power savage forms. So... Overall, it's a pretty tough fight. It really is kind of a brains versus brawn type of encounter. And I know I'm biased because I don't know Thrag that well. I think that Doctor Doom would win. I think that he scales high enough with people in Marvel that he can at least hold his own against someone like Thrag at least long enough for him to find a way to put him down, which I think that Doctor Doom definitely would given enough time. I think even if Thrag went to speed blitz him right off the bat, that Doctor Doom's force field would be enough to hold him back, as we've seen it hold back people like the Thing, and I, I don't think Thrag's stronger than the Thing. 
and I think the fact that Doctor Doom's been able to hold his own against people like the Thing, the Hulk, Namor, puts his strength, durability, speed, combat skill, abilities, at least in a state to where Thrag's not going to throttle the guy. And then you add in his versatility, energy output, magic. I just, I don't think that Thrag would win, based on everything that I'm seeing here. Though, as always, it is up to you guys to vote on it. So let me know, look at the community post, make your vote, and um, I'll see you in the next video.